Chicago Bears quarterback Mitch Trubisky was ruled out of Sunday's game against the Minnesota Vikings with a left shoulder injury after falling pretty awkwardly landing on that left side. Welcome back everybody to your number one source for learning everything about sports injuries and sports medicine topics. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Mitch Trubisky's left shoulder injury and talking in more detail specifically about shoulder dislocations. Make sure and go subscribe if you guys like this type of content and wanna stay up to date with future videos and let's get started. Trubisky injured his shoulder right here on this play after falling and landing on that left side with his arm kind of up out above his head. At the time of recording this, we haven't gotten any official diagnosis, but we did see him come back on the sidelines wearing a sling in that left arm. This type of fall raises a lot of concern for a possible shoulder dislocation, and so I want to address that specific type of injury in this video. The specific nature of what makes this concerning for a dislocation is the position of his arm whenever he falls. Shoulder separations are injuries to the AC joint and those more commonly happen whenever the player's arm is tucked in alongside their body and they land on the shoulder. Shoulder dislocations happen much more often when the arm is outstretched away from the body like we saw here with Trubisky. Let's dive into our anatomy a little bit here and then we'll come back to the play to kind of draw some connections. The shoulder has the most mobility of any of the large joints in our body and in part that's because of the shape of the joint. The so-called socket of the shoulder joint is the glenoid, which is part of the scapula, and then the ball is the head of the humerus. But unlike the hip, where it's a really deep socket that the ball is inside of, the shoulder joint is more like a golf ball sitting on a tee. There's really no enclosed cup, so to speak, that the shoulder joint sits in. It's really just the smooth surface of the glenoid with the surrounding soft tissue that helps provide that stability. Keep in mind too, the shoulder does have a labrum and that's a buildup of cartilage around the glenoid. And that's gonna be really important as we talk about the potential complications after someone has a shoulder dislocation. There's two general types of shoulder dislocations that I wanna talk about. The first and most common happening in over 90% of all shoulder dislocations is an anterior dislocation. The other type are posterior dislocations and these are far and away less common. We describe shoulder dislocations based on the position of the humerus or the arm bone relative to the glenoid. So if you're looking to the side of someone, an anterior dislocation is when the humerus goes into the front of the body. Anterior shoulder dislocations commonly happen when someone lands on their arm when the shoulder is abducted, meaning it's up overhead, and a little bit externally rotated. If we go back to the play where Trubisky got hurt, I think that certainly is a reasonable concern to be worried about just based on how he falls. We can see him go down to the ground. He has that arm abducted, meaning it's up over his head, and then he lands awkwardly on that side. There's certainly other injuries that can happen with this type of a fall, but a shoulder dislocation should certainly be high on the list. So if someone has a shoulder dislocation, what are the possible complications and things we have to worry about after the injury? The most serious stuff we potentially think of are fractures to the humerus and injuries to any nerves and blood vessels. The nerve most commonly injured after shoulder dislocation is the axillary nerve. One of the main motor functions of this nerve is controlling the deltoid muscles and it also provides sensation to the skin on the outside of the shoulder. The reason it's so high risk is because of its proximity to the humerus and how it can get torn or pulled on whenever the shoulder joint dislocates. And wherever there's nerves, there's probably blood vessels. And so there's also arteries that run right along the same area as this nerve. And those can also become damaged when someone has a shoulder dislocation. That's why one of the primary things to check if someone has their shoulder dislocated is the status of their nerves and their blood vessels. You feel for their pulse down at the wrist and you also check the function of that nerve by looking at the motor strength and feeling for the sensation around the outside of the shoulder. So let's assume all those things are okay and we've reduced the shoulder and put it back in place. What are the next key things to look for? Now we have to think of soft tissues around the shoulder that could potentially get injured. And the main two to think of are the muscles of the rotator cuff and the labrum. The rotator cuff muscles wrap around the humeral head and provides additional stability to the shoulder. And so based on how extremely it gets dislocated or pulled, you can have tearing and injury to those rotator cuff muscles. Labral tears are especially common after a shoulder dislocation. Sometimes upwards of 90% of these dislocations can have an injury to the labrum and we specifically call it a bank heart lesion. If you think of the humeral head sitting inside the shoulder joint with the labrum wrapped around it, whenever that humeral head dislocates, it essentially can shear off a component of that labrum as it comes out of the socket. When it's healthy in the proper location, it's secured in there in part by the labrum, and so in order to dislocate, it has to shear and kind of push past that labrum. Sometimes though, along with tearing the labrum, you can actually knock off a chunk of bone from the glenoid as well, and we call that a bony Bankart lesion. If this occurs, depending on how big it is and how much bone was taken off of the glenoid, 
you might have to have surgery to get it pinned back on to make sure it heals. Coming back around now to Trubisky, these are the types of things they're gonna be evaluating for. Likely before the end of the game, they've done x-rays, so they can look and see if there's a fracture in any of those bones. They can pick up one of these bony bank heart lesions sometimes. But to truly determine if there's been a labral injury or any injury to the muscles, they're gonna have to do something like an MRI or an ultrasound. Once you've had one dislocation, you've stretched that tissue and you're much more susceptible to having a recurrent dislocation. This risk decreases as you get older, but Trubisky's young enough that he still is gonna be at a very high risk of having recurrent dislocations if he did in fact suffer one during this game. They'll of course check for other injuries in the shoulder that can occur, but dislocation should always be something at the top of your list whenever you see a mechanism like this. We'll provide updates later on in the week if we hear more about the final diagnosis, but I hope you guys learned something in this video, and until next time, thank you for watching, and we'll see you later. Bye.